Good afternoon, class. How are we doing? Good. Good. Today we're going to do chicken chasseur. All right? It's a very, very classical dish from Escoffier from his cookbook. We've modified it to fit our needs in today's uh, modern world. What we have here is from our last demo. We cut up our chicken. Our pan is getting hot. We're going to take our oil and place it in it and let that get hot. All right, you've got six ounces of oil here. It's in your packet. I'm going to give this a little time to get hot at this point in time. Now, the reason why I need to get this oil hot is this chicken just came from the refrigerator. The refrigerator has what temperature, people? 38. Come on, guys, sing it out. What do we got? 34, 36, good. Anywhere between 34 and 40, according to the Board of Health in New York State. All right? So when I take that chicken coming at 34 or 40 degrees, if I want to put it in my oil right now, what, was my, what would be my problem? What's going to happen? This is what? Shall we say cold? Where's it going into? Hot. What's going to happen to the temp of the oil? It's going to drop like the stock market at 28. All right? So the problem is if the oil isn't hot enough when you put this into it, you're going to end up uh, having your chicken absorb a lot of the oil instead of start caramelizing right off. So it's imperative to get that oil hot. All right? Very, very important. All right? As you can see, we got a little smoke over here. Our oil's hot. We're ready to rock and roll. Presentation side down all the time. Okay? Presentation side down. Back up. It's like see where all the front row gets split. There you go. Okay, at this point, we're now going to cook our chicken. All right, what temperature we have to cook that chicken to internal temperature? 165, why? Because I said so, or why? Killed salmonella, absolutely. That's exactly why we're doing it. Not because I said it, because it kills salmonella. We do not want to infect any of our patrons with salmonella. It's an important fact. Okay, as this thing cooks, you're going to notice some, uh, some observations with this. The exterior is going to start to brown. That's a good thing. That's Maillard's reaction that's going in going on here. The natural sugars inside the chicken are starting to caramelize in that hot oil. The proteins are starting to caramelize, which is part of Maillard's reaction. All right? The fat is giving up its moisture. That's why it's popping. All right? That's the water coming out of it. All right? We're having a nice little color here. This is good. It's getting better. All right, I'm going to take a little peek. No, I want it a little darker than that. All right, nothing wrong with it. I'm going to let that go for a little bit. In the meantime, all your meat on flash should be in front of you. All right, we have our parsley, our chervil. Chervil, I like to cut at the last minute. The reason being is it'll turn black in a heartbeat. So you want to keep that chlorophyll together. You want to keep the brilliance and the vibrancy as well as the uh, flavor profile. You'll notice our uh, shallots are cut into a, uh, a very fine dice. Our mushrooms are quarter, uh, can be quartered. These are sliced. Slicing cooks a little bit faster. If I were going to do this for a large party, which means let's say I'm going to prepare this dish for 25, 30 or in cheap in uh, steam table pans, I would probably quarter the mushrooms. The reason being is they don't shrink as much. Mushrooms have 90% moisture. Today we're using domestic mushrooms. All right, we, of course, we have my favorite friend butter there, along with my other friend salt and pepper. At this point, we're going to start turning everything over. Notice we've got some nice brown here. This is good. You're seeing the blood coming to the top. All right. 
of the wingette. That tells you basically that everything is now being pushed, all the blood and all the moisture is being pushed towards the center. Beautiful, nice caramelization, nice browning. That's what's occurring. We're going to achieve this on the same side. All right, then we're going to end up uh, dumping out our uh, chicken and adding our liquids to it along with, uh, we're going to first saute everything up and then introduce the chicken right back to it. This will go for another probably minute or two. And then uh, we're going to take our chicken and uh, remove it. Okay, the second side cooks a little bit quicker than the first side. The reason being is it's coming up to temperature. All right, it went in there cold and it got hot quicker. Okay? This procedure from start to finish will take about 20 minutes. Okay, at this point, I'm kind of liking the color even on the other side. It's still a little rare in the center, but that's okay. We're going to braise this. Braising means we're going to introduce some liquids to this. So at this point in time, we're going to remove our chicken. Okay, and we've got to get rid of our oil. We have a disposable pan here for that. You're going to leave about two tablespoons of oil in there. I like what's in there right about, and eh, maybe a hell more. There we go. Good. At this point in time, I'm going to introduce my shallots. Okay, I'm going to move those around. I'm going to introduce my mushrooms. Mushrooms are like little sponges. I'm going to saute this up. In real life, I would be doing this on the burner, but this burner is very mobile. At this point, it's starting to dry out a little bit. I'm going to introduce a little fat and butter to get this motivated. As you can see, the fat's being absorbed into the mushroom. Mushrooms are like little sponges. In real life at this point, I would deglaze with some white wine. Here, because we're a school, we'll use a little chicken stock. All right, and we're gonna add a little bit of brown stock to this, a little demi-glaze. Move this around. Now I'm going to introduce my chicken back into this. Yes, question. When you put the chicken back into the pan, does it matter which side you put it on? No, because halfway through, you're going to flip it over. So it really doesn't matter. You're going to cook it halfway, and then you're going to flip it halfway again. Now again, we're going to let this... Now, braising is a two-step process. One, dry heat. Although we used oil, it's considered a dry heat method. All right? Dry heat with oil. Now we've just introduced liquids to this. So we're technically, we're braising it. Usually braises are done in the oven, but braising can also take uh, part on top of the stove, which is not a problem. A lot of restaurant dishes and old uh, family-style recipes call for it done on top of the stove. 
uh, like Chicken Scarpio, an Italian restaurant, or maybe Chicken Franchise, an American restaurant. So by all means, it can take place in other, uh, other than in the oven. In the oven is when I have large batches, if I were gonna do a full sheet pan of this, or a full, uh, let's say, steam table pan of this, I'd wanna do this in the oven. One, it frees up my burner space to it, cooks a little bit more evenly. But you can actually do this uh, a la minute preparation, which means at the moment in a restaurant setting. What we're gonna do here is uh, reduce this down to a syrupy glaze. Uh, we're gonna plate this up and uh, we're gonna call it a day. We'll add a little bit of butter and some uh, herbs uh, towards the end of this. All right, as you can see, it's working halfway through. At this point, I'm going to take this and kind of flip this over so the other side gets introduced to the sauce. Uh, yes? Is your skin still going to be crispy at the end? It's not going to be crispy, crispy as we know it, but it's going to have a great flavor and taste for it. And it being a braised item, if you want to have it crispier, you can actually finish this in the oven and then pour the sauce on top. Uh, you will get a crispier skin, but the downside of it is not going to be as flavorful. And for me, I'm willing to sacrifice some of the crispness of the skin uh, for intense flavored uh, chicken. For me, it's all about uh, flavor and taste. Uh, we did salt and pepper that uh, chicken prior to it going in, but at this point I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper because I do not, I use natural stocks as you guys know here. We don't use anything out of a can. If I were using canned stocks, then at that point in time I'll probably uh, negate some of my salt. Alright, as this comes down, we're getting close. I'm going to start uh, chopping up some of my chervil here on my board. Chervil's got a great like licorice flavor to it. If you can't get it, you can use tarragon. Tarragon has that same licorice flavor, except it's more pronounced. Chervil's a lot more delicate. All right, very light in flavor. It changes the profile of it, which I happen to like. All right, we're gonna move this around a little bit. All right, it start coming to about right about where I want this. At this point, I'm, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter, add a little extra shine to this. Turn my pieces over once again to warm them up before I put it on the plate. As you can see, the sauce is coming down. It's uh, getting a lot tighter, a lot more shine to it. All right, and with that shine, you're also having uh, for that reduction, you're getting intense flavors to it, which is a beautiful thing, right? It's all about getting those flavors. All right, at this point in time, we're gonna shut off our burner. We're gonna plate, keep our pieces towards the middle. So you have some negative space. I like adding a little height to this. At this point, we're gonna add a little bit of chervil and a little bit of parsley in with uh, our sauce. Mix it around and spoon our sauce on the top.
great. At this point, we're going to finish this off with a little bit more. Try to keep our edges cleaner for the patron. Very good. There you have chicken chasseur. Thank you very much.